Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. It is the last week of the regular season in college football, which means it is rivalry week. It's going to be a great week. We have four rank versus rank matchups and tons of other games that could easily influence how the committee uh, selects their top four teams and could affect who goes to their conference championship game. So we're going to break down the top games, in my opinion, that we have this week, and we're going to give you a look at our Heisman watch since we are only two weeks out before the Heisman uh, winner is announced on December 9th. So I'm going to give you my top five that I think should be getting invitations to, to New York for the Heisman Trophy ceremony. So without further ado, we're going to break down their top games starting on Friday between South Florida and number 15, Central Florida. Now, this is a game that I got a couple comments saying they think this game is underrated, and I couldn't agree more with that statement. This game is huge for both reasons. Keep in mind, South Florida, they're not ranked, but they are 9-1. and one. They're led by Charlie Strong, a heck of a coach, and a great quarterback in Quentin Flowers, dual threat, and that's going to be the key for Central Florida. They're going to have to stop Quentin Flowers, especially on the ground. If they can't stop him on, in the run game, I can see South Florida going in there and pulling off the upset. Now, the winner of this clinches the division. Remember, I mean, Central Florida is sitting at 10-0. They're undefeated. Uh, but the winner of this clinches the division and most likely face Memphis in the American Athletic Conference Championship game. So the stakes are huge in this one. Now, Scott Frost has done a great job with Central Florida taking over and transforming this program. They had a good season last year, but they're doing even better this year. Mackenzie Milton, that quarterback, doing a great job as well. So this is going to be a fun coaching battle, a fun quarterback battle. I like Central Florida in this one because it is at home and they know the stakes are high. Uh, not only to get to the conference championship game, but sitting at 15th, they would be the team to go to the New Year's Six Bowl right now. And if they can win this and win their conference championship game, they are a lot for a New Year's Six Bowl. Stakes are high right now, but Charlie Strong's team is still very talented, like I said, sitting at 9-1. And they could uh, have the, to the tools to go in there and pull up the upset. But right now, I like the Knights in this one going in and, uh, and getting the win and advancing to the conference championship game. And then all the rest of these games are on Saturday starting at 11 o'clock with the game, one of the biggest rivalry games in all of college football, number 9, Ohio State, at Michigan. Now, Michigan, of course, is not ranked. They were ranked last week, but lost to Wisconsin, only 24-10. to 10. And that's what some people got to keep in mind. Michigan is still a fairly solid team. They are 8-3 and three right now, and with this game being at home, they, you know, Michigan always plays well against Ohio State, even on a down year. In these rivalry games, teams always play better, no matter you know how well or how good their record is. So this game... Uh, could be tough for Ohio State going into the big house. It's going to be a crazy atmosphere. Ohio State's technically still in the running for the college football playoffs. Some people say that they can beat Michigan and beat Wisconsin and hope some people lose in front of them. They might be able to slip into the top four with two losses. I like Ohio State in this one because on paper, I mean, clearly they are better. JT Barrett, uh, they definitely own the edge at quarterback. JT Barrett playing some solid football right now. Michigan obviously dealing with some horrible offensive injuries. Uh, and, that, and that's the key. Michigan's got a heck of a defense. And if they can uh, play some solid defense like they did against Wisconsin, uh, they could give Ohio State some trouble. But they're, they're going to have to generate some offense to defeat the Buckeyes. If they can't do that, Ohio State could win this game fairly easily. So but that's going to be a very big game. Stakes are high, more so for Ohio State. Michigan, of course, would love to go in there and beat the Buckeyes, especially after that heartbreak loss last year that uh, prevented them from getting to the college football playoff in the Big Ten Championship game. Uh, but right now, I like the Buckeyes in this one. Uh, but it's going to be a very exciting game. And then this one... Number one, Alabama. Number six, Auburn. By far the biggest game of the entire day. Maybe the biggest game of the entire year. Uh, you know, the stakes are always high. It's the Iron Bowl. Auburn could be, you know, two and ten. And Alabama could be seven and five. This game would be a huge game. I mean, but now the stakes are even higher. It's probably the biggest game uh, in the Iron Bowl since 2013 uh, when the winner of that game was going to the, uh, win the SEC West and go to the SEC Championship game. The stakes are the exact same. Uh, the scenario is the exact same. Winner of this uh, wins the SEC West, goes to the SEC Championship game to face Georgia back in 2013, which was the kick six when Auburn defeated Alabama in the shocker. Uh, it's, it, that game was at Auburn. This game is at Auburn. Uh, so the key in this one is, of course, going to be Alabama's defense. Now, they've been dealing with some injuries on defense. Both these teams won it easily this past week. Alabama playing Mercer, Auburn playing Louisiana Monroe, overcoming some early struggles, I should add. Uh, so we didn't see a lot of these teams last week. Auburn killed Georgia, as we saw. Alabama struggled against Mississippi State, mostly, I think, due to those defensive injuries that they've been dealing with. They're going into a crazy environment. Both teams know the stakes. Both teams hate each other. It's such a big rivalry game. And the key is going to be, can Jared Stidham and the Auburn offense exploit the Alabama's defense and put up some points where Alabama's going to have to match them stride for stride on the um, offense? And that's going to be the kicker here. If Auburn can't exploit Alabama's defense, that's been fairly weak uh, due to those injuries. Uh, Alabama should be able to take care of business. Now, I still like Alabama in this one. You know Nick Saban's going to have his team ready for this one. 
The environment here at Auburn is going to be huge. I think home field advantage is going to be a huge role in this one, no doubt. And I expect this game to be very, very close because both teams have a lot to play for. Uh, but I like Alabama to go on the road and get a very, very close win against the Tigers. But it's going to be a heck of a game. Stakes couldn't be higher for college football playoff berths or, and SEC championship berths. So this is a huge game. But one thing I should add is even if Auburn beats Alabama, Alabama could still make the college football playoff without even playing in the SEC championship game. Go watch some of my previous playoff analysis videos, and you'll and you'll hear me discuss those scenarios. But it's still very possible for Alabama to make the college football playoff, even if they lose to Auburn this Saturday. And then Clemson at South Carolina. South Carolina, led by Will Muschamp, finally getting back into the rankings here at number 24. He's doing a great job with this Gamecocks team, seeing at 8-3 right now. Clemson, though, beating the Citadel last week. Nothing major there. Kelly Bryant, though, doing a fairly good job at quarterback replacing Deshaun Watson. He's done a great job all season. Dallas Sweeney getting his team back. A lot of people thought they were going to take his little step down as national champions after they lost so many t- uh, people on the offensive side of the ball and defense. But Dallas Sweeney's done a great job keeping them up uh, in the top four nationally. With a win over South Carolina, uh, they face Miami. No matter what, they will face Miami in the ACC championship game. Winner of that game more than likely stays in the college football playoff. But they have to get past South Carolina. Jake Bentley at quarterback. This, in my eyes, is a potential trap game. Clemson could be looking ahead to Miami next week in the ACC championship game. South Carolina, they're not in the hunt for the SEC championship or anything. They're 8-3. and three. They want to beat their rival, uh, who they've lost to the past couple of years. So this is going to be a huge, huge game. With it being at home, I know South Carolina's going to be pumped. That's going to give them a huge edge. And Clemson's got to be careful. They do not look ahead to next week's ACC championship game. I expect this game to be closer than some may think, but Clemson gets the win on the road. Uh, that's just my, my thoughts. And then number eight, Notre Dame, number 21, Stanford. Notre Dame's kind of the same boat as Ohio State here. They technically still have an outside shot at the college football playoff, and their two losses are much better than Ohio State, I should add. Ohio State's lost to Oklahoma and got blown out by Iowa, who's only 6-5. and five. Notre Dame's losses are to Georgia and Miami, the number two and number seven team in the country. They've got a chance to improve their resume by going on the road and defeating the number 21 team in the country at Stanford. Uh, losing this game, of course, keeps them out, and I don't think they would be able to get in the college football playoff even if they win this game. They still have that outside shot. They're ranked ahead of Ohio State, but not having a conference championship game does hurt their chances a little bit. But I like Notre Dame in this one. Bryce Love, who I have in my Heisman watch, has done a great job for Stanford, one of the nation's leading rushers. Uh, so Notre Dame's going to make sure they have to shut, shut him down. They struggled a little bit last week against Navy, but I think um, I think Notre Dame goes on the road and gets the win here. I think it, Brandon Wimbush should have a big day against this Cardinal defense, uh, but expect this one. A couple years ago, it was a thriller. I think it was two years ago that these teams were both fighting for college football playoff berths. Stanford ended up winning on the last second with a game-winning field goal, uh, kept Notre Dame out of the college football playoff. Uh, so there's going to be some bad blood here. It's kind of become a good rivalry game. But I like Notre Dame's chances here on the road. Stanford's going to really be wanting to watch this game against Washington State and Washington. If Washington is able to go upset the Cougars, then Stanford will play for the Pac-12 championship game. But if Washington State beats Washington, then the Cougars will be playing in the Pac-12 championship game. So unfortunately, both these games are at the same time. So Stanford's going to have to wait until their game's over to see how this game turned out. But the Apple Cup has always been a really fun rivalry game. Last year, uh, I thought Washington State was going to give Washington a run for their money, but they did not. They got blown out against the Huskies. This year they have to go uh, to Washington, and I like Washington's chances in this one, uh, which means Stanford will be playing for the Pac-12 championship game. With it being at home, Washington, you know, they've suffered a couple setbacks uh, this season. They lost to Arizona State, which was a bad loss, and then to Stanford. So they only have two losses as well. Uh, But seeing a 17th, people don't really remember that. Remember last year they were a playoff team. They lost to Alabama. It was actually a respectful loss. They've got a very explosive offense, and the same goes for Washington State in this game, led by Luke Falk, at quarterback. Uh, but they've also got Jake Browning over here for the Huskies. I like this game at home. I think they're more explosive on offense. Home field advantage is going to help them in this one, and they're wanting to play spoiler against their rival and prevent them from going to the Pac-12 championship game. I like Washington at home in the Apple Cup. And now our Heisman watch. In my opinion, these are the top five players that I think should be going to uh, New York for the Heisman Trophy ceremony. Uh, barring any crazy, uh, you know, injuries or poor performances over these next few weeks. Now, number one, we've got Baker Mayfield. He has been amazing for the Oklahoma Sooners this year. And I don't care what you say about his off-the-field antics or what he did against Kansas. Don't get me wrong. What he did was wrong. But we are forgetting one person named Johnny Manziel, who did the exact same thing as Baker Mayfield, if not worse, throughout his entire college career. Uh, And he still won the Heisman as a freshman. 
Uh, didn't get it taken away for him. He really didn't get suspended that much. He got suspended for one half, I think, against Rice. So that's a huge deal. Uh, so I don't want to hear people saying that Baker Mayfield shouldn't deserve the Heisman or that it could hurt his Heisman chances for what he's done. What he's done is wrong. What he did against Kansas was wrong. Playing the flag uh, at Ohio State was wrong. And what he did this offseason, getting uh, caught with uh, drunk driving. But Johnny Manziel has done the same thing, if not worse. Baker Mayfield deserves to win the Heisman Trophy. He's the number one uh, person on my list right now. Uh, and I don't want to, you know, I don't think it's okay to say that it should hurt his chances for what he's done on the field this season. It's been wrong, but players have done that thing over and over again. Multiple players, most recently Johnny Manziel, as I've said, he should be number one on the Heisman watch, should win the Heisman Trophy, unless something crazy happens. Now, and keep in mind, he is suspended, or he will not start the game against West Virginia this Saturday. He will play, but he it will not start. So, that's something to keep in mind. Now, number two on the list, I've got Jonathan Taylor and Bryce Love, two of the best running backs in the entire nation. Some say Bryce Love at, uh, from Stanford should be a little bit of a head of Jonathan Taylor, but I kind of disagree with that. He's been the workhorse for the Badgers this season. done a great job. Now, Warner Brook, the quarterback at Wisconsin, has done a great job, but I think uh, he hasn't been as good as he could be. Jonathan Taylor uh, has really carried this Badgers team, and I think he's going to continue to do so well into the Big, 12, uh, Big Ten championship game and maybe into the college football playoffs. So that's why I got him a little bit ahead of Bryce Love because he's gotten Wisconsin to where they need to be, sitting at fifth in the nation. Now, Bryce Love is very close behind him. Like I said, two of the, these guys are the two of the nation's leading rushers. Bryce Love's been doing a great job carrying the Stanford team, and he's done some of this uh, battling an ankle injury. And that's why some people could put him above Jonathan Taylor. But I think the ankle, ankle injury has hurt him a little bit. He missed the game against Oregon State, missed a little bit of the game against Oregon. But nonetheless, done a great, great, great job for the Cardinal. Very excited to watch him play against Notre Dame and into the bowl game and potentially against USC in the Pac-12 championship game if Washington can upset the Cougars. Now, Saquon Barkley was everybody's Heisman favorite way early on in the season. And a couple games cannot define a Heisman season. You can't say, oh, there's been one bad game. He should be out. But he's had a couple bad games. He was on a roll up until that Ohio State game. And that's when they really shut him down. Then he kind of got shut down again against Michigan State. And I think those two games have lost him to Heisman. He had a great bounce back game against Nebraska. Put up some great stats in that game. Got the win. But, you know, he just hasn't been able to produce like he was earlier on in the season. And I think that's why he's dropped so far low. And that's why Jonathan Taylor and Bryce Love, two other running backs, have been able to jump in. Now, uh, I, you know, like I said, I think right now the Heisman's got to go to Baker Mayfield. But right now, I think Saquon Barkley is the third best running back in the nation behind these two guys. And then Lamar Jackson, sitting over here at number five, I don't think he's going to be able to win the Heisman this year, but everybody's kind of forgotten about him. This was the Heisman Trophy winner from last year, and keep in mind, his stats this year are better than his stats last year. Overall, QBR, passing yards, touchdowns, rushing yards, everything is better than it was last year. But people are forgetting about Lamar Jackson because of Louisville is not as big of a national power as they were last year. They're only going to have, I believe, seven wins. Could potentially finish with an 8-4, and 7-5 record, uh, depending on what happens in their game against Kentucky this Saturday. But Lamar Jackson has been playing some outstanding football, but they haven't been able to get Louisville back up into the national rankings, competing for the ACC championship game, uh, because the, he just you can't do everything by yourself. But Lamar Jackson, stat, he's trying to, and the stats show, stats are better than they were last year. Not going to be able to win the Heisman this year. People aren't talking about him enough, though. And that's why I got him uh, as my fifth player on my Heisman watch. So get ready for some exciting Week 13 of college football. Like I said, it starts Thanksgiving night with the Egg Bowl. Continues well into Saturday, all of Saturday. And watch our Week 13 recap video that will come out on Sunday or Monday. And then we're going to, of course, like we always do, break down our conference championship games once all those are set. And we're going to give you our playoff recap uh, when the new rankings are released next week. So get very excited for that. Eat some turkey. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Watch a lot of football. It's going to be a great rivalry week, week 13. Thank you for watching. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you next time on The Gridiron Expert.